And God bless you. Amen. Amen. I won't keep you long. Turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis. We got a hard word today. We got a hard word. This is a, a funeral season for me. Amen. We got a hard word. It won't be easy. You don't walk out. It's going to get better. But you got to take your medicine first. Amen. Turn to the book of Genesis. 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 We're going to go to Genesis 1 and 14. The book of Genesis. That's an easy one. That's the first Bible. Just open up first page. Amen. You ain't got to go that far. First page. First page. Genesis chapter 1. Go down to verse 14. Genesis chapter 1. Go down to verse 14. Today's message is not easy. It's not easy. It's a it's going to be a tough message for some of y'all. It's entitled, Bury the Dead. Hard message. Found this in the Bible, Genesis 1 and 14. It says, and God says, let there be lights in the firmament. And he says, of the heaven, divide the day from the night. And then he says, let them be for signs and for season and for days and for years. And God said, let there be light in the firmament. Why is that powerful? Time was created by God. Time was created by God. We live in time. But when we die, there's no more time. Before you were born, there's no more time. When you go to heaven, there's no time. Or if you go to hell, there's no time. Time is only an entity for us while we are living. So the Bible says, Ephesians 5 and 16, redeem the time for the days are evil. What that means is don't waste time because this is the only time that you will ever have time. Once you leave the earth, there's no more time. God created time for us to use to build, for us to use to love, for us to use to be good to other people. One of the saddest things I have to do is funerals. Like I said, I got four this week. And the thing is, when you stand and you're looking down at that body, nobody never talks about how much money they had. They only talk about what good did you do for somebody while you was here? What, what, what was the thing that you did? How did you pour into somebody else's life? So God says, redeem the time for the days of evil, for he created time for us. And he created for us to use to be good to others. You're never more like God than when you're good to someone else. So use the time that you have. You've got a hand clap. Hallelujah. You're never more like God than when you're good to someone else. And the thing about being good, you ain't got to have a whole lot of money to be good. It's interesting. Uh, Mama Kemp's granddaughter is here. She's back there. And one of the things I remember about Mama Kemp. Uh, when I first met her, she, she said, come here, little boy. And she said, come on in. And she dragged me over there. I was a young teacher. I was 24 years old. And, and the thing she said, she gave me some car keys. I didn't know this woman from Adam. And she said, new teacher. I was a brand new teacher. She said, I want you to drive this brand new convertible Camaro. And she, she laughed. I thought she knows it's true. She said, I want you to drive this. And it was homecoming. She, she handed me these keys. I didn't know this woman. She handed me these keys. And I drove that Camaro. That was the first time I've ever been in a convertible. That's the first time I've ever been in a car that was rented. That's the first time somebody ever trusted me with anything. She gave me hope. She spoke to a young teacher who was unconfident. She spoke to a young man who didn't have a father. She gave me something just by handing me some keys to a car. You're never more like God than what you give. And he gave us this time so that we can be good and give to others. You're never more like God than when you give hope, love, and prosperity to somebody who's in hurting. Who's somebody who's in doubt. Next, turn with me to John 11 and 33. Thank you, Jesus. John 11 and 33. Thank you, Jesus. John 11 and 33. It says, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also were weeping, those are the black folk, he came unto her and he groaned in his spirit and he was troubled. Verse 34, and Jesus says, where have you laid him? 
And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, this is the shortest verse in the whole Bible. It says, Jesus wept. That's the shortest verse in the whole Bible. It says, Jesus wept. Verse 30 says, and then Jesus said, behold, all those who have loved him. And he called Lazarus and he rose him from the dead. Jesus wept when he saw something that died. But here's the powerful thing about Jesus weeping. After he put that man in the ground, he went on to other business. God says, it's time for some of you to move on. It's time for some of you to leave what's dead in the past. It's time for you to get to moving forward because God has something better for you. God has powerful things for you. And if you are stuck behind, if you stuck stuck on the dead stuff, you can never get to where God is calling you to go. Some of y'all need to bury some stuff and put it in your graveyard and walk away from it. Because God says, I'm calling you. Yes, you can cry. Yes, you can weep. Yes, you can mourn. But he said, now it's time for you to get up, move up, and move on. Because God has great things for you. And you can never get there if you stuck looking behind. God says to some of you, it's time for you to move on. Next, turn to Genesis 23, 1 through 4. Genesis 23, verses 1 through 4. This is where this whole message came from. I love this Bible. Genesis 23, verses 1 through 4. And Sarah was 107, 27 years old. These were the years of her life of Sarah. Verse 2. And Sarah died in Kirjah. The same was in Hebron, the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah, and he wept for her. Verse 3. And Abraham stood before his dead wife and spake unto the sons of Ethan. He said, I am a stranger to you. I traveled far to be with you. It says, give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead so that she will be out of my sight. Now here's the powerful thing about that. Abraham was talking about his wife. He had been with her for 85 years. They've been married. She was 127. They've been married almost 90 years. And he said, he cried. But then he said, give me a place so I can get her out of my sight. And I thought that was powerful. I've never seen this in the Bible. I read the Bible eight times. And, and this, this, this passage was highly. And I said, what does this mean? God says, take those things that are dead and get them out of your sight. He says, get them out of your sight because I need you to move on. Because God says, Abraham, I have more for you to do. Abraham, you got to plan for your son. Abraham, you got to build a home. Abraham, you got to go to college. There's things that God has called you to do. But as long as you keep looking at something that's dead and you cry, when you cry, you can't see. There's tears in your eyes. You can't go forth. When there's pain in your heart, you have no room to learn. When there's pain in your heart, you have no room to love. Some of you got old relationships that you're holding on to and bitterness that you're holding on to. And God says, go for it. You can't get a new man if you stuck on the old man. You can't get a new job if you worry about the old job. God said, move forward. I have more for you. I have better things for you. Turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43 and 18. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 43 and 18. I don't know who this is for. Isaiah 43 and 18. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. And then God says, behold, I want to do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You shall know it. I, even I, will make a way for you in the wilderness. And I will give you rivers in the desert. God says, I've got something new for you. God says, it's the beginning of 2023. I've got something new for you. How many of y'all need something new to happen this year? Raise your hand. You need God to do something new for you. God says, I got something new for you. But he says, you got to forget the old. Now, how you going to have new and you holding on to old? You can't be in two places at one time. God says, I got something new for you in 2023. But he says, remember not the former things. Put some things behind you so you can go forward into the destiny that God has called you to go to. Next, turn me to Matthew. Matthew 9 and 35. Matthew 9 and 35. Why are you talking about this? I'm glad you said that. Matthew 9 and 35. Matthew, thank you, Jesus. 9 and 35. When you go back later, you're going to read these scriptures. Matthew, Matthew 9 and 35. 
And it says that Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and he was preaching to the, to the people in the kingdom. And he was healing every sickness and, and disease amongst the people. Verse 36. But when he saw all the people, he was moved with compassion on them. Thank you, Grandmaid. Because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Verse 37. And then he said unto his disciples, he says, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are free. And then he said, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. What does this mean? God says, there's homeless people outside. There are. There's girls walking down Figueroa. There are. But there are people who don't have, who, who are drunk, who, are, who are, are, are high on drugs. That there are people who are hurting. There are people, but 10 people got shot last night in Monterey Park. God says there's pain all over the place. He says there's so many people that need help. But he says not many people want to do it. See, what we want to do is we want to get educated. We want to get a Mercedes. We want to take trips to Aruba. We want to buy $3,000 purses. We want red bottom shoes. We want all big houses with swimming pools. But when will you help? God said there's so many people who are looking for help and there's nobody to help them. God says you're never more like me than when you help somebody who can't help themselves. Uh, I have a brother-in-law. We talk about him all the time. Luther Key, God bless you, big move. And, and Luther Key, uh, I'm going to get his profession. He's a security guard at a high school. That's his profession. He's a security guard. He's, sec he's security at a school. And the thing is, he don't make a lot of money. I love my brother-in-law. He don't make a lot of money. But if he got $5, you got $250. If he got a T-shirt on and you ain't got one on, he'll he literally will take his shirt off and will hand it to you. If he got a sandwich, he'll split it in half and give you the other half. He feeds at least 10,000 people per year, and he's a security guard at Drew High School. God says, if you have a heart to help, I'll make a way. If you have a heart to do something for somebody away, I will provide the sustenance. All you got to do is be willing to do something to help somebody else. All you have to do is be willing to make a difference in the life of a child. All you have to do is be willing to open up your arms and bless somebody who can't bless themselves. It's not always about money. It's sometimes it's just about help. It's about are you willing to try to make somebody else's life better? Are you willing to pour into somebody else's life? Yeah, it's okay to shine. I ain't mad at your Gucci purse. I ain't mad at your stiletto shoes. I ain't mad at your nice home. But who have you blessed? Who is better because you live? We got to stop making it always about this. Sunday, fun day, this is my day. And God says, who have you helped today? Who is better because you live today? Make sure that you help somebody else in this life. Because we all have a point where we will meet God and he will sit us down and say, who did you help? Who did you help? Who did you help? Who did you bless? Next, turn me, turn me, turn me. We almost done. Turn with me, turn with me to Colossians. Colossians 3 and 23. Colossians 3 and 23. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 3 and 23. Colossians 3 and 23. And it says, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Verse 24, knowing that the Lord, ye shall receive a reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 25, but he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong that he doeth, which he had done. And there is no respect for a person. God says, everything that you do, he sees. You can't hide nothing from God. I don't, I don't know why. And that's the thing. Uh, when I got called to be a pastor, I was like, God, me? Janetta know me. She know I'm a straight fool. I'm a, I'm a big fool. Uh, I love women. I love to go fast. I love all kinds of sex. I love, I love everything a pastor should love. And I say, God, why would you call me? Because God says, they that serve me must serve me in spirit and in truth. 
And he said, Michael Henry, you stupid enough to serve me with your dumb life. You stupid enough to stand before the people with a broken marriage. You stupid enough to serve me before with bad credit. You stupid enough to serve me with all your flaws. He says, you will serve me with your truth. God is calling the people who are going to be real with God. God says, I'm tired of this fakeness and standing on the pulpit and, and looking down upon everybody and judging people. And you got the same problems everybody else got. God says, serve me with your truth. One of the coldest things a pastor ever told me, he said, Mike, God knows you better than you know yourself. So he says, serve me with your foolish self. Serve me with your sins. Serve me with your alcohol addiction. Serve me with your pornography addiction. Serve me, God says, serve me just the way you are. And when I found that out, I got saved. Because I found out that I was good enough for God to love me. Some of you don't realize that you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. But, but, but how can I be worthy? And, and, and I just got out of jail. You worthy. How can I be worthy? And I failed all my classes. You're worthy. How can I be worthy? And, and, and I got three strikes on my record. I got bad credit. I had three divorces. God says you're worthy because God loves you with the evidence. God loves you just the way as you are. And he said, pick up your cross and follow me. He says, follow me with all the things that you struggle with. He said, because you're worthy. You're worth it. Some of you need to understand you are good. Yeah, you had some bad days. Yeah, you made some mistakes. But that's no different than nobody else. God says there's good in you. But you got to believe that you're good. You got to believe you're good enough for God and the universe to love you. God said, serve me with your truth. Serve me with all that you have. Next, turn me to the book of Psalms 113. We're almost done. Psalms 113. God says, serve me. God loves you. And he loves you with the evidence. That's why my favorite man in the Bible is David. Psalms 113. It says, praise ye the Lord. It says, praise ye, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name shall be praised. The beautiful thing about this, folks, this speech was, it was said by David. By today's standards, David was almost worse than our Kevin because David had women everywhere. David was a woman. I, he was so cold, he took his best friend's woman and had his best friend set up and killed. David was cold. He was a straight killer. He was a gang. He was all that. But he loved God. And he served God with all that. He never stopped serving God. He, and he would ask for, Lord, please, but Lord, I know I'm wrong. And when God would punish him, he was like, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Some of y'all need to just go to God and say, have mercy, God, have mercy. But keep serving God. See, if David could serve God, and God loved David, matter of fact, God loved David more than anybody else in the Bible because David was honest with God. He never was fake with God. He never, he never was like many of us trying to be a, a Christian on Sunday and then a heathen on Monday. No, David, like, I'm a heathen all week long. He said, God, I, this is me. This is who I am. But God loved him because he served him with his truth. Some of you need to serve God with your truth. Be real with God, and he'll be real with you. Next, turn me to Psalm 107. Psalm 107, we're going to read 1 through 9. Psalm 107, 1 through 9. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Have you thanked God for being good to you? Have you thanked God for waking you up? Have you thanked God for the closet that you have? Have you thanked God for the clothes on your back? Have you thanked God for your children? Have you thanked God for the skin? Have you thanked God for your voice? Have you thanked God for your little apartment, for your dusty car, for your tap card? Have you thanked God for your job? Have you thanked God for the shoes? You learn how to thank God. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. You need to know how to thank God because God is good. God is good. That's why God loved David so much. When David had to bury his son, he served God. Let me tell you something. David had to put his son in the ground. And he got up and went to church and praised God. Some of y'all say, I ain't 
ready to know God. God killed my son. He killed my baby. He killed my mama. And God said, serve me. David served God in the worst day of his life. He never stopped serving God. David's son tried to kill him. Two of them, he served God. David, one of David's son raped his daughter. Read the Bible. I love this book. He kept serving God. He never stopped serving God. He had a whole lot of trouble, but he never stopped serving God. Some of y'all, as soon as trouble comes, y'all go, uh, God ain't real Look at what I'm going through. And God says in Psalm 34, 19, he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But it says, God shall deliver you from them all. God didn't say that he was a good time. Do you go have good times all the time? God said, you're going to have some hard times. You're going to have some difficult days. You're going to have some bad relationships. You're going to have some negative things. You're going to get pulled over by the police. You might even get your car taken away. You might go to jail. You might get shot. You might have a heart attack. You might get cancer. Serve God. Serve God with all that. Because the thing is, if you keep serving God, you have a great testimony. Because God will deliver you from them all. I don't look like what I've been through. You would never think I got shot at. Been shot at. You would think that my head was scraped on the side of a road, uh, going down the side of a highway at 90 miles per hour. I got the scars on my backside to prove it. But God says, if you serve me, I'll make you look like what you did go through. I'll make you not look like what you went through. God will keep you and pull you out so if you look good, you smell good, you even think good, although you just came from hell. May God keep you. And the thing is, tell your story. Too many of y'all embarrassed about what you've been through. Why are you hiding the fact that you were raped by your father? Why are you hiding the fact that your mama was a crackhead? Why are you hiding the fact that you dropped out of school? Why you had the fact that you've been divorced? Why you had the fact that you used to be a prostitute or a stripper? Why you had the fact that you are a homosexual? God said, whatever you're going through, tell people about your story. Because there's somebody going through the same thing. And if you can make it, they can too. Oprah Winfrey was raped, molested. She's a billionaire. Tyler Perry, molested. Homeless for five years, sleeping inside of a car. He's now a billionaire. The thing is, God says, tell your story because there's somebody who will hear what you went through and they'll get hope. If he made it, I can make it. I got kicked out of college. I got a college degree. My kids all graduated from college. If I made it, you can make it. God says, tell your story. Don't you be ashamed and hold your story to yourself. Don't be embarrassed about the pain that you went through. Don't be embarrassed about your darkest days. Don't be embarrassed about the abuse that you suffered. Don't be embarrassed that you were sleeping on the street. Don't be embarrassed that you were selling stuff on Crenshaw Boulevard. Tell your story. Because there's somebody who needs to hear that God was with you in your worst day. Some of us have many bad memories. God was with you. But here's the thing. you still here. That means that God is real. I know that God is real when I look at my testimony. I know that God is real when, when I look at my history and I say, like, wow, I was there. I, I remember I was driving by a bush one day. That's one of the places I slept. God was with me. God says, tell your story. And the very last thing, turn me to Hosea 10 and 12. We done after this. Hosea 10 and 12. Hosea 10 and 12. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hosea 10 and 12. Thank you, Jesus. That's your name. Hosea 10 and 12. Hosea 10 and 12. It says, so to yourselves in righteousness. That means do good for others. It says, reap in mercy. Then it says, break up the fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. God says, break up the fallow ground. Break up the fallow ground. Now, now that's fancy Bible talk. What does that mean? Uh, any of y'all ever been to a farm? Anybody, y'all? I'm from the south. We used to have to grow stuff. You know, y'all been to a farm. All right, down south, uh, whenever you want to grow stuff, you had to dig a hole. If you ever planted a seed, you got to dig a hole, and then you put the seed inside the hole. Well, when the ground is hard, they call it fallow ground. 
because the shell, you try to dig, them, dig in and it's hard. So you got to wet it up, you got to soften it up, and then you can put the seed inside the ground. God said, break up the fallow ground. What is the most fallow ground to many of us? Our hearts. Most of us have pain in our heart, so we get hard. We, 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 we get strong in our heart. And God says, you ain't supposed to have a strong, hard heart. Your heart supposed to be soft and tender. And our hearts get hard because we've been through so much pain. Our hearts get hard because we got so many negativity and we got scars on the path. And God said, break up the fallow ground. The thing is, if your heart is hard, you can't receive love. If your heart is hard, you, you, you can't be as prosperous as you could be because your heart is hard. Some of you are, have a hard heart because you can't forgive. You holding on to the pain of the past. You holding on to what happened yesterday. You holding on to what she did. You holding on to what he did. You holding on to daddy walking away. You holding on to what your mama not being there for you. you whatever it is, you holding on and God says, let that thing go. Some of y'all need to forgive today. Everybody in this room, except them babies, has somebody that they need to forgive. Who is it that you holding on to? Forgive them. Let go. Break up the fallow ground. Forgive them. Forgive that man for cheating on you. Over and over and over and over again. What? I ain't forgiving that sucker. Really? God forgave you. You sinned over and over and over and over. Some of y'all done sinned at least 50 times a day and it ain't even 4 o'clock yet. You've been sinning that much. God, every time you sin and God said, oh, are, you, are you sorry? Yes, Lord, please forgive me. He said, it's forgiven. But somebody do something to you once or twice and you hold on to it for life. And you carry it for life. And I ain't going to forgive you. I hate you because of what you did to me. And God says, if you hate him, you hate me. Let me say it again. God says, if you hate your brother or sister who you can see, then you hate me. Well, well God, you didn't do that to me. They did. Nope. I love them and I love you. So if you hate them, you hate me too. I don't believe that. It's in the book of 1 John 2 and 4. God said, if you hate your brother who you have seen, how can you love me? You've never seen me. So God says we got to forgive. Some of you need to have a shirt. That's why God says forget yesterday. I have a friend. Her name is Michelle. She said, how come you always so happy lucky? You, you just don't hold on to nothing. Matter of fact, she said, you're like an android. You're just like a robot because you act like nothing pays you. I said, I told her, I said, things used to affect me. I used to be a stalker. See that? You didn't know that. I used to hide under girls outside their window and peek through. I used to hide under their bed and, and follow them wherever they went. And then one day God grabbed me and said, you have to stop this. You will destroy yourself or destroy somebody else. I was broken because I was dependent on man to fulfill my needs when God says I am all you need. And once I got saved, God healed my heart. I ain't got to go through your cell phone no more. I ain't got to track you no more on no Instagram. I ain't got to do none of that no more because God made me whole. May God make you whole. May God give you peace in your soul so that you can forgive and move on and do what he's called you to do. And the last, I got one more because God going to give me. Uh, Go with me to 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. It's the last one, I promise you. If I say anything else, you just slap me, slap me. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. I can't leave without this one. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is good. It says, neither complain as some of you like to complain and were destroyed of the destroyer. Neither murmur as ye some of you also murmur and were destroyed of the destroyer. That might not make sense to you. Some of y'all have a complaining spirit. Some of y'all have a complaining spirit. I used to have a complaining spirit. I used to complain about my wife, but man, she's on my nerves and this and that and this and that. I used to complain about my job, man, you know me wrong. And, just, and you go, I complain about my car. The thing is, when you complain, 
You're giving the devil praise. That's what you're doing when you are complaining. You're, you're telling God, well, this thing ain't good enough. So you're telling God, that ain't good enough, so the devil gets strong. And every time you complain, demonic spirits are released. And what they do is, they go and destroy the thing that you're complaining about. So if you complain about relationship, now that thing starts to go down and it starts to become destroyed. If you complain about a job, now the demons are released and everything starts to become destroyed. If you complain about your house, that thing starts to falter and tear away. God says, don't complain. Well, what do I do when things are going wrong and I, and, and I don't like what I see? God says, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Be you not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, what does that mean? God says everything is as bad as you think it is. Some of us complain about our car. You got a car? Renew your mind. You complain about your kid. They bad. You was bad. They'll get better. You complain about your house. You got somewhere to live. You complain about, about the fact you don't have a house. You alive. You healthy. If you start looking at the good, God will manifest the good. If you, can, if you can start looking at the good, God will manifest the good. And what you start to see is you got more good than bad. See, a lot of us don't realize that. We just look at the negative and then we focus in on that. And then we talk about that. And then that negative thing starts to grow. And then it eventually starts to destroy. So God says, be content in every state. Whether you have plenty of money, or oh, when you got five dollars to your name, be content. <laughs> because God will make sure that regardless of whatever you're going through, he will supply. Philippians 4.19 said, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. If God be your source, then nothing can prevail against you. If God be the one to take care of you, regardless of what you're going through, you're going to get through if God says I'm with you, even though you got cancer, you'll beat that thing. If God says I'm with you, even though you face it 99 years. We had a young lady come to this church. And I'm going to shut up. She was facing 99 years in prison. She came to this church 99 years. And they had her dead center because the evidence was on videotape. What she had done was so egregious. It was on videotape. She's facing 99 years in prison. God delivered her. Because we serve a mighty God. And he says, I don't care what the enemy got on you. If I love you, I will pull you out that thing. When they say you'll never make it, God will make a way. When they say you are defeated, God will say, you won't get out of this thing. Because he will make a river in the desert. He will make a way where there is none. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Come to the front. Janetta, come on up to the front. Come on up to the front. Hey, boy. Come on, walk this way. Yeah. Oh, man. 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 Oh, need something good to happen this year. Amen. That is good. Some people are too. How many of y'all are struggling with something as we speak? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Here's the thing. We stand at the altars. Hebrews 4, 16. If you don't believe it, you can look at it in the Bible. It says we stand at the altar to obtain grace and mercy to be there in your time of need. Some of y'all can say, God, I need you right now. God, I need you because the thing I'm going through, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this thing. You can pray that right now. Why? You ain't got to say it out loud. I don't need to hear it. That ain't none of my business. You can pray that in your spirit. God, I, I need you right now. I don't know how I'm going to get through this thing. I, I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. 
My, my gas bill $300. I, I only got $100. Gas, I, I Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get, uh, get food. Food's expensive. Eggs is $10 a cart. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Ask God to be there when you can't be there. And I promise you, God will make a way. But here's the thing. When God makes a way, you got to do your part. Some of you need to work on being more faithful. Because the thing is, God says, uh, I'm good to you. Who are you good to? Why don't you serve me? Why don't you read your Bible? Why don't you tithe? Why, why, why aren't you kind? Well, why are you still holding on? Some of us, you got anger in your heart, and you know who you is. They got to look at you. They got to point at you. You know you still mad at her. You still mad at him. You still mad at them. You still care this thing. You won't let it go. And God said, let that thing go. Why are you still mad? God ain't mad. And some of us are going to miss heaven. Because you got anger in your heart. That's Matthew 16, 14, and 15. Look it up for yourself. God said, you can't go to heaven if you can't forgive. Hell gonna be packed. Because so many folks is mad. I ain't letting it go. I ain't forgiving him. I ain't forgiving her. And God says, I won't forgive you. I don't want to go to hell. But believe me, I done been through some hell. How many of y'all been through some hell? Raise your hand. I've been through some things. I'm like, I'm, Lord, how am I getting out of this? I remember there's some days at work. I'm like, I don't even want to see what tomorrow. How many of y'all been at work and you said, I don't want to see tomorrow, but I already know. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Amen. And God said, I got you, Michael. See, the thing is, we serve a mighty God. If you serve God, he will open doors. You looking at a guy who, who the doors were slammed on. Boom, boom, boom. And God said, here's the way. God will make a way. Serve him. And serve him in your mess. Some of y'all is addicted to some crazy stuff. That ain't my business. That's between you and God. God says, serve me with your addictions. God says, serve me with your pornography use. Serve me with your hoeing ways. Serve me with your sexual addiction. Serve me with your alcoholism. Some of y'all love Patron, amen. You love tequila. You love cocaine. You love weed smoke. You popping Zan bars. You got the weed in your pocket right now. And God says, serve me with your sins. Why would God say that? Because here's the thing. When you walk with God, you'll get better. You'll get better. And that's the thing I love about that Bible. A lot of crap peak preachers can't stand me because I read about it. They get me. I can't believe that's in there because you don't read it. It's in the Bible. God says, serve me with your iniquities because he will help you to get better. Some of y'all, you want, some of y'all, uh, how many of y'all had a fight in the last five years? Raise your hand, you had a fight. Amen. All right, here's the thing. You know, here's the thing. Guess what? If you serve God, you might have had a few fights. This year, you might only have one. And then going forward, we won't have none. I used to cuss people out at the drop of a dime. Uh, matter of fact, me and Bishop, we were driving over here, and the young right down that street, a young man parked his car in the middle of the street, start unloading his groceries while I'm late to church. Okay, uh, now my old Michael and I saw my uh, as we were sitting there watching this brother unload his groceries. I, oh, Michael, I saw myself in like 3D vision jumping out the car and going there. I saw myself, and God said, sit yourself down, fool. Hold on to the steering wheel. Don't you get out. He's almost done. You got to be patient because God is working on you to make you a better you. That's the thing. That's why God served me. Just how you are. He's going to make you better. I'm going to look at my son right there. He's going to ask me. I just held on to the steward. I said, he showed his dignity. <laughs> and I was holding on. And God said, he's almost done. He's almost done. Thank you, Jesus. He drove off. I said, ooh. God is working on you to make you better. And you're going to get there. Some of y'all are worried about your finances. And if you raise your hand, you got a financial problem. Raise your hand. Here's the thing. Here's how you're going to work on that. Those of you who just raise your hand about finances. Here's the thing. Think about one thing that you're willing to sacrifice for God to fix your problem. So that's your homework. Think about what you're willing to sacrifice for God to take care of your finances. 
Some of y'all, here's the easy part. We're going to do this starting uh, next week. You get fast. Go without food, go without social media, go without video games, uh, whatever it is that you're into. Fast. Make that your offer and say, God, I'm going to offer you this. Can you take care of my finances? And watch God move in a special way. And the thing is, once you do that, once you see God doing that, and then say, God, I'm going to become a tither. Believe me, I already told you, I don't need your money. I'm good. You tithe for your family. You tithe for yourself. You tithe so that God can bless you. I'm standing here on faith. This 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 church been over eight years. I ain't got no money. I want to come to high school. I make five thousand dollars a month. Five thousand times twelve is sixty. After taxes, that's down. But God said, I'll take the one dollar and I'll make it twelve. I'll take your twenty dollars and I'll make it look like five hundred. I'll take a little and He'll make it much. God will protect you. And not only protect you, he'll protect your family. I'm 53 years old. I should have high blood pressure, diabetes, sickness, every sexually transmitted disease there was known to man. But God says, I'll make you whole if you trust me. Trust God and watch him make a way. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Anybody have any words before we close? Her mom, he said, pray for my wife's mouth. All right, amen. Amen, even son. Yes, that's right. This is your job. Baby, dear. get her here. Watch God work on her. Get her here. Watch God work on her. I promise you. So like I said, if you think she bad, I would work. Amen. She done saw me have at least 10 fights while she was in Compton High School. How you got a teacher fighting in the classroom? They're like, hold on, who is that? The security would come, I promise you, security would come and get me. Come on, come on, Adrian. I'm going to get that song. <laughs> Amen, everybody grab a hand. You bet. Amen, bow your head, bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this bounty of you. Thank you for these beautiful families. We thank you for all these young people. Father, I say you continue to strengthen them, to help them, to help them to see the good that you have provided for them, to help them to understand that they are loved, that they are precious cargo to you. Father, give us a spirit to break up the fallow ground of our hearts. Father, help us to forgive those that have hurt us, those who have, who have done us wrong. Help us, Father, to be more loving. Help us, Father, to do good. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity into that hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into that hand. So these young people become the head and not the tail. So they become victorious and never defeated. So that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And we ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen.